uh, a movie review. Another elephant themed video. Uh, I want to talk for a little bit about the movie One Lucky Elephant by a director whose name I suddenly can't remember, Lisa something? Um, yeah, I'm gonna list that in, um, in the description of the video. Sorry, misdirector. Uh, you did a good job. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Uh, it's a documentary about an elephant called Flora who uh, needs a new place to live. Uh, Flora was purchased when she was just a baby by a man called David who loved her very, very much uh, and who had always dreamed of owning an elephant and who also uh, had dreamed of being a circus director. And he was a circus director and when he got the elephant, he created Circus Flora, named for her, where she performed with him uh, and with her colleagues in the circus, both human and animal, for a number of years. Uh, but as she began to grow up, I think he started looking when she was late teens, 16, 17, something, uh, he started to realize more and more that she couldn't live that life permanently. She needed to have a more normal life for an elephant. She was no longer enjoying the performances that they were doing together. She just was becoming less and less happy in that situation with the traveling and of course with being alone as an elephant. For an elephant cow it's very harmful to be alone. I believe it's harmful for a bull as well, but less so. But elephants are extremely sociable animals and they don't get enough social interaction from humans. No matter how many of us there are, how much we love them, how much they love us. Elephants need to be with other elephants. And that's what David came to realize more and more. Uh, and he began to try to find some place where Flora could live and have as close to a normal life as she, could, as she could have in captivity and having grown up in captivity. Uh, and he tried several places, some zoos, she was um, in a zoo for, well, a short while, I think in Florida somewhere, but it didn't work out. And eventually David began to hope that Flora could come live at a place called the Elephant Sanctuary, which is in Tennessee. Uh, where they offer sanctuary to sort of retired elephants from circuses and zoos. The only problem was that they had no African elephants and they were not open to African elephants, uh, only Asians. And that is a big problem because these two species, they may look very similar, although the physical differences are obvious as well, uh, but they're not the same species and they should not have to live together. Uh, they speak different languages, they communicate differently, they eat differently, they do everything differently and it is it's quite risky to place Africans and Asians together because it c can work out but it can also go really wrong because all of their communication is so different that you're kind of asking for trouble and uh, the sanctuary had no Africans, and didn't want any Africans, so that was out for a while. Um, but then, uh, some time after David, I'm sorry, I'm just really preoccupied with this bit of my hair that keeps sticking out. Uh, um, David eventually learned that the uh, sanctuary was going to take in two African elephants, and he then began to hope that there might be a space for Flora, since they were setting up an African section. A uh, sanctuary was created by a woman named Carol Buckley, who also had bought a baby elephant um, back in the day and had performed with her in the circus. Uh, Carol's elephant is named Tara. Um, of Tara and Bella fame. She's the one whose best friend was a dog. Um, and Tara is still with us, but unfortunately Bella passed away last year. 
Um, Carol Buckley had had almost exact the same experience as David had had, that while they're young, they love to perform, uh, but as they grow up, they lose the taste for it and become more and more difficult and more and more in need of the company of other elephants. So Carol set up Sanctuary, which since then has grown and grown and uh, they have about a dozen Asian elephants there now and they have two Africans, one of which is Flora. Because Flora did eventually go to live at the Elephant Sanctuary and with two African elephants at the time, Tanji and Zula, um, Zula eventually died quite suddenly and Tanji and Flora are now, as I understand, quite good friends. And the movie chronicles David's quest to find a safe haven for Flora and then his grief at losing her. Because uh, a sanctuary, they eventually decide, they work on the premise that these elephants that they care for, who are all older elephants, um, they have been through traumatizing events and traumatizing treatment. Um, and the premise that they operate on at uh, the sanctuary is that they are now suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, which is perfectly plausible to me. These are elephants who often have uh, experienced their herds being culled, basically murdered, um, and have then been taken in by force to a zoo or a circus and have been trained by being broken to the circus, which is physically and emotionally quite painful and degrading. And as a result of this, they suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and David, after leaving Flora at the uh, sanctuary, where she had a lot of trouble settling in, he has not been allowed to see her since then. Because they've come to the conclusion, even though he was promised when he signed over all his legal rights to them, that he would be able to come visit, uh, they have since decided that he cannot, he cannot come in to see her because it would be very distressing to her and would be harmful to her psychological development, etc. Uh, so the movie chronicles his, also his grief over this. Flora's progress, the sanctuary, and David's hopes of seeing her being eventually dashed. Um, since the movie was made, uh, Carol herself has been ousted from sanctuary and apparently now can't visit Tara. Uh, she's one of the founders and she can't go there. Uh, so there are things going on behind the scenes of that place. I personally, I have... I think it's fantastic what they're doing, the way they're helping the animals, uh, the way they are providing a safe haven for them. But I am not entirely convinced that they don't sometimes have their, have their heads up their asses. I know that they treat uh, the elephants holistically, uh, which includes with homeopathic medicine. Um, and you kind of lost me already at that point. So. Yeah, they're doing a lot of things right, but they're doing some things wrong as well, unfortunately. And for David, it's a bittersweet experience that he goes through in the movie because he doesn't necessarily follow their belief that it's too traumatic for Flora to have any kind of relationship with him and all of this. So it's two worldviews that collide. But it is fascinating to see the relationship between humans and elephants, their relationship with each other, and Flora as the central character, as the lucky elephant of the title, um, having her life change over and over, uh, until now when she finally has her final place, that she's, it's going to be her forever home. Uh, that's a bit precious, that expression, but yeah. Um, that's the story of the movie. There's a lot more to it, of course, a lot more details, and it's fascinating to see the interactions between humans and elephants, which is something that really fascinates me. Uh, so if you love elephants, you should definitely see that movie. Uh, make up your own mind. And hopefully be inspired a little bit 
to uh, to learn to find out about the situation for elephants and circuses and in some zoos, not all but some and um, make up your own mind and commit yourself to whatever level of activism you feel is right for you these animals are wonderful amazing creatures uh, we should all learn more about them so uh, one way of doing that is watching One Lucky Elephant an interesting and uh, fascinating documentary it's definitely worth watching and now the trailer I wanted an elephant all my life. I had no idea what I was getting into. Flora, stop it. She is mischievous, which as she got older, I thought she might lose, but instead it's getting worse. It's hard to think that maybe I'd made a mistake to take this elephant's life and merge it with mine. She was captured as a baby and it scarred her. David came along and said, I love you. I'll take care of you. You're perfect. I'm going to make you the star of the show. But that's not enough. She just doesn't seem to be enjoying performing anymore. Go ahead, all the way. All the way. We needed another life for her. She needed to be an elephant, not a dog or a daughter. My dream is to return it to Africa. Good morning. We've been together for 16 years. She's definitely going to outlive me. <laughs> That's all right. No one's going to hurt you. We're not leaving you. <laughs> Come on, hurry. Move up. Where do you think she should go? Well, I know there's a number of zoos that are actually renovating their facilities. Yeah. I'd hate to put her in a zoo. Almost all of them feel like jails to me. I think that wild animals should be wild. Could you have her here? Uh, not at the present time. Yeah. There are not a lot of choices. That's OK. She totally misbehaved. She acted out. Go throw a rock at me? Thank you. If Flora wanted to hit us with that rock, she would have. That was a very big rock. I'm worried that people will start thinking of her as a bad elephant. She laid fences down. You would never expect her to be able to do the amount of damage that she did, and it looked like it was easy for her. She was just plunked down in this orphanage and expected to get along fine, and she didn't. And I blamed it on you. David never did anything bad to Flora. This isn't a rescue. This was a planned matriculation. Flora is the example of all that can go wrong with the best of intentions. I am sure he will never, ever be able to, to part from her. You know, I love her. And she loved me, it's as simple as that.